Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Well, hello, Fernando. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Hi, Jody. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so we had a bit of a chat before this, and we've been in contact mm-hmm. because of your unit, which I love, the Pod Mobile. So far, that's what it's called. We'll see if that stays. <laughs> but, uh, right. But yeah, it's a wonderful audio interface that I have really enjoyed experimenting with, and I'm going to be taking it with me on the road when I do some traveling. So we'll see how it holds up. I'm sure it'll be awesome. Uh, oh. But I do like to uh, start the interviews by asking you if you have an early memory of how sound moved you, if you'd oh, like to I, share that. Yes, plenty. <laughs> the first memory, it was probably my mom's car in the back seat. I was, you know, not old enough to be in the front seat at all. And um, every time she would take me to school, I'd be singing in the back seat and... Uh, oftentimes I would not sleep unless I was just listening to music. Uh, it moved me through and throughout the entirety of my life still does. And it's just, I don't know, uh, just something I absolutely need. I can do without TV, possibly computer, but not without music. So <laughs> I totally get that. Yes, definitely. Uh, and I'm right there with you. So yeah, our our family used to sing in the car during trips too. <laughs> That's awesome. Always fun. Yeah. Uh, so you you had told me that you played guitar early on. How did that come up? I do. Uh, I started when I was 12 years old. Uh, in fact, that oh. was a bit of a turning point in all aspects of my life. Um, I was interested in electronics. So I was between toys and sound equipment but when i was 12 years old it became pretty much all about audio and uh, the reason i learned the guitar is that you know i was having trouble um making friends really and one day i saw at school this you know this guy from you know that was a little bit older and playing the guitar a bunch of people around him like i gotta do that (laughs) you know and and then i learned it it was it was great uh it's it still, I mean, it still works for that very purpose. It's amazing. You know, I made a lot of friends by playing music. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. That, well, it's uh, great to be musical. I mean, that would be a good reason to mm-hmm. focus your attentions on electrical engineering for audio interfaces Definitely. and that kind of thing. Definitely. So uh, your background is from, you're from Brazil? Correct. I'm from Sao correct? Paulo, Brazil. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So did that... Did that infuse you with the music? Is that like, oh, is that gosh. where that started? 100%. Or, mm. yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I could pinpoint that to São Paulo, but the music scene there is crazy good. It's like mm-hmm. there are pubs and and bars that will be you know playing all sorts of music on every corner. You know, it's a twelve million people city, and if you want to mm. listen to jazz on a Tuesday night. You got it. If you want to listen to blues, you got it. Bossa Nova, you got it. Samba, you got it. Anything. So rock and roll, plenty. So um, (laughs) I I did, when I was 18, my favorite place to go, because that's the uh, legal drinking age in Brazil. So people start coming out, you know, uh, like going out more. Legal drinking age here too. So I get it. (laughs) Oh, there you go. There you go. It's 21 here in the US. Yeah. Um, So between the ages of 18 and I'd say probably 25, 26, I would go like three times a week to this one place, live band. I knew everybody and really had a strong influence in in me pursuing uh, entrepreneurship and uh, specifically building audio gear for musicians. And um, I I did that for 10 years before I came to the U.S. hired by Kicker. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of things did you build? 
Gosh, I built a lot of gear. Um, <laughs> first, I was really focused on uh, for musicians, right? Uh, I play the guitar. I have plenty of uh, friends that are musicians. And the genesis of it all was this uh, project that was this bit of a funny slash tragic story behind it uh, called, um, I called it the studio class at the time. And this is the first diagram. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is like. Wow. The, I'm not the, seeing anything on it. Yeah, it's all drew, drew by pencil. I oh, follow. okay, so it's really light. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Wow, okay. Yeah, there's there's a lot. Um, but anyhow, it was this crazy big... It looked like a guitar amplifier, but bigger with a lot more controls. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that you would give a lot of control to the musicians, not just... Uh, the the guy on the the mixing board that sometimes sure. you know there's problems with communications especially if it's in the middle of the performance um, so I I uh, I drew that up in probably 2006 and and that was what motivated me to um, build you know uh, this project and we filed for a patent I say we because my mom paid for it oh Good okay. Thing. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that patent resulted in nothing. It was just ex extremely oh. expensive. Oh, it no. wasn't a good idea. That idea that I thought was a great idea was not a good idea. Um, oh. Well, I guess you got to learn, right? <laughs> absolutely. A hundred percent. So, so what could, happened? Well, um, I built this prototype. I finished it in, in 2007. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see if I have a picture. Um, yeah, it's the one with the, the wooden one here. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, and, um, I finished in 2007 and that was kind of a lab on top of a speaker. There was a lot of, there were a lot of circuit boards on top of it and wires going mm -hmm. everywhere. And it actually sounded really good. And the speaker was, I finally tuned the speaker because I wanted to have a, uh, the sound character of a studio speaker, but with the sound pressure level of, uh, you know, a PA speaker, so you could use it in a, you know, like in a venue or so, uh, and, and such. And um, I had a bunch of sound effects, some of which would, you know, put like a vintage sound to a guitar, for example. Um, so it was actually really cool. It's just the pattern was, it is worthless. Um, but it was a great learning curve. And that gave birth to another piece of equipment later on. And I, which I can show you the picture, built and sold those in Brazil, a hundred of them, one by one. And that was brutal because I put a lot of thought into the unit itself, but no thought whatsoever about how to build it. And they... Oh, no. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Like, if you make a mistake... Once, twice, three times is bad enough, but a hundred times is, is, it gets pretty brutal. And, um, Ouch. it was terrible. It was like, I learned that lesson very well. Um, that, that's what, you know, stemmed from the first, um, crazy patent prototype. And this into, I released this in 2008. I actually presented in 2008 and released in 2009. And it was quite mm -hmm. revolutionary at that time because yeah. it, it, it packed a bunch of power and it was so small and simple to use. Um, so just so that the people who are listening to this instead of watching are aware. Um, so what did you just show me? You showed me mm. a unit that's how, how big is it and what does it do? It's about the size of a letter paper, you know, in terms of dimensions, the like eight the by 11, of it, if you get okay. like if exactly like uh, eight by 11, mm -hmm. more or less 400 watts RMS, uh, universal power input. So you don't have to worry about if the, uh, the wall outlets 110 or 220, uh, two microphone inputs, four instrument inputs, sound effects, had a display, this beautiful brushed aluminum, uh, front wow. panel, uh, it was a wooden cabinet painted silver, like automotive paint. It was okay. like the iPod 
of the the you know of professional audio and okay. it was it worked great it was a pleasure to use but to build it oh my goodness <laughs> it was i never really uh actually uh measured the time because i think i would just give up if i did it was oh no <laughs> crazy it was probably like i would say at a minimum at a minimum four to five hours after you built wow. like 50 of them and really got the hang of it I had oh, to drill the holes in the wood. And you built a hundred. And yes, <laughs> there were five circuit boards inside of the thing connected by a bunch of wires. And every circuit board had a different problem that I needed to sort before, <laughs> before even putting them together. And oh, then wow. every problem was different, right? It was, it was bananas. <laughs> and I had sunk so, all the funds I had into it. It was, it was crazy. Uh, yeah, it so, was So did it was that nuts. lead... That that must have led into like what you're doing now. So um, it did. you're working at right. at Kicker, you said, right? Kicker, like you're doing that right. for job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And what do you do there? I'm um, their senior electrical engineer, and I do okay. some some bit of coding as well, uh, more for the chips than anything else. Um, okay. But that's basically it. I designed their power amplifiers for subwoofers, for full range speakers. Okay. And we're talking Great. about high volume, big power, cost sensitive, high reliability, as far as consumer market is concerned. That is like yeah. must haves for Kicker, which I really like because, you know, uh, I don't know, I have, a, I get a bigger uh, satisfaction uh, working with things that has a constraint in terms of budget, you know, cannot be overly mm -hmm. expensive. You have to deliver a ton of value for the money. I think this is so cool uh, to work with that and like kind of, you know, uh, work a miracle out of the parts that you have. Yeah. Then, you know, go super fancy and, oh, this is the best thing ever and you should pay, you know, 10 grand for this and, and then you can basically use anything. I think this is sort of like the movies that when, you know, uh, the budget is, is, is short, sometimes the movie is a lot better and then the sequel when you have a lot more uh, budget to, you know, much more money to make the movie, maybe it's not as good, which happened time and time again, right? Yeah, um, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you went from from your your unit that was costing you four or five hours of your time and a lot crazy. of headache crazy. to yeah. learning, I guess, how to make really good product on a budget with right. with Kicker, and then Absolutely. you created your own pod mobile so how did pod mobile come to be pod mobile uh what prompted the design of it was that i wanted to record my own audiobook so i wrote a book and i published in 2021 christmas 2021 and uh i wanted to also have the audiobook version of it and i have a i should not say the brand but i have an audio interface that didn't meet the ACX requirement of, I think it was like a minus 55 decibel noise floor. I don't remember if this mm. is the exact number, uh, but it wouldn't meet it because it had electrical hissing noise. And so, you know, even if my environment was quiet, there was no way to use it. And in doing research to what should I purchase, um, really wasn't very clear. And I saw different brands. Uh, some that were like kind of within the budget that I wanted to spend, like not more than $300. Um, I, I, I didn't feel confident that they would overperform what I already had. Um, you know, and being an engineer and the pod mobile being kind of a small device, I'm like, I'll just build it. I'll just design and build one for me. Um, so I the love that. <laughs> So the, okay, I'll make one. <laughs> I'll make one. I actually, I, let me show you the, the first one because it's painfully <laughs> ugly. This is the first oh. pod mobile, okay? Oh my goodness. How do you, yeah. yeah it's, it's, so yeah, so it's just for people listening, this baby. is very different from what I received and from yeah. what others have, have seen. And, and from that, that lovely shiny unit that you just showed me before uh -huh, we started. Uh -huh. So yes. yeah. Oh my goodness. Sounds great works. though. This works yeah. great. Sounds great. Just, just, you should, just should not look at it very much because, you know, <laughs> it, it might give you stomach ache or something. Oh no. <laughs> um, oh well, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, you got to start. 
you know, if you if you're just thinking, oh, I need to design it to be pretty or whatever, and that was like bare bones, functional. I just needed to be functional, and the initial idea is that it would be only one channel, one headphone out, one microphone in, USB done. Um, but then I figured, what if what if I have an interview with somebody, right? Uh, being interviewed or interviewing somebody, why not just you know sort of copy and paste and put another channel there? So I did that. So this one has two channels. And and then this this great friend I have, Jeff, which by the way, I met him playing the guitar. It was spring and I was playing the guitar at home. I'm going to go back to it. I'm not going to branch out just real quick. I was playing the guitar totally, at home. Go ahead. Uh, and then I'm like, why am I doing this? I should, you know, at least be out there, you know, like. And and then I just took my gear and start playing music at this gazebo near a sushi place. And this guy comes out and he says, hey, I'll give you 50 bucks to play for my friends at the restaurant. I'm like, fine. Great. And then that's how we met and we became great friends. And now he's actually my um, equity partner in this. How that's things wonderful. happen. Right? right. So he saw yeah. this first thing here. He was really impressed. With the sound, of course. It's amazing that he got over the looks of it. Um, <laughs> it was actually... Jeff and his wife saw this and they were like, Wow, this sounds so great! And, you know, and they, they really liked it. And they have a friend who uh, started a podcast. Sounds terrible, but the content is absolutely great. And uh, actually, I really like their content. And Jeff came up to him and said, Hey, I have the right thing for you. You know, because Jeff is like, he can sell ice in Alaska, right? <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's a, it's a great, it's the best skill to have. Honestly, if you if you could have one skill in life, I think that's it. Communication, well, sales. Well, good to have that as a partner. Oh, absolutely, right? Because I'm a <laughs> yeah. terrible salesperson. I'm afraid, I'm shy. I don't want to be like, you know, uh, I, I don't know, I just feel such an internal resistance to say, hey, look at my stuff and it costs this much and you should have one because this, this and that, you know, but it has no problem whatsoever with that. So, <laughs> uh, so he sold that in terms of an idea to this uh, podcast. Um, and, and then I'm like, okay, I, I can't deliver that ugly thing. It's just, I can't do this. You know, like personally, I, be, I feel embarrassed. So then, then I shaped it differently. Then I made the second one that looks much like this one that you have. Minus a few things. It's not as pretty, but it's 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 80% there. And that was the Pod Mobile. And then his friend he he sent it to a friend and he said, "Well, but what if you want to have more than two people?" I'm like, "Good okay, question." Re great. And I'm like, you know, the audience that I'm targeting is People that are doing the, the audiobook recordings and, you know, solo podcasts, maybe it's not necessary, but what if I throw an expansion port in it and I can daisy chain it? So it just came to be that way. And there's so much, uh, there, there are a lot of markets that this fits. You know, there's this, it's a product that works for voiceover, podcasts, uh, audiobook recordings, interviews. It will scale. You can buy one, so two people, and then later you can get another one. Or your friend has one, so you don't have to buy one. Um, and people seem to love it. And I'm, I have done basically zero effort up until this point of any marketing. Um, you know, I mean, I never paid ads for this or whatever. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm really working hard to figure out how to scale production wise. You know, lessons learned from the past. Um, but yeah, it's been great. It's been super, super nice, especially uh, emotionally rewarding by the, the amazing people I've been uh, selling to, you included. So, you know, it's been very, <laughs> very nice. Oh my gosh, I couldn't ask for better, honestly. Well, I'm really glad because this is a wonderful unit and I, I did some experimenting with it earlier myself and really liked how it sounded and liked that it had a very lo low noise floor. Like there wasn't any mm -hmm. sound from the unit itself that was getting right. in the way of things, which Correct. very much appreciated. Yeah. Especially if right. you're traveling with a unit, which a lot of podcasters and a lot of voice actors are going to end up doing with a unit like this. 
So Absolutely. yeah, I think you really, yeah, you have something very special here. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you what uh, being an entrepreneur has, has given to you. Like, why did you decide to go into being an entrepreneur in the first place? Mm. I think you touched briefly on that at the very beginning when we were talking and you were right. still in Sao Paulo. But um, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure, like, why, why the entrepreneurship? What drew you to that? Well, I have a whole list of reasons. Um, but let's start with the, the thought that I believe that most people have that in them when they're young. And it kind of, it never gets reinforced, basically. Unless your parents, one of them are an entrepreneur. But it certainly will not be reinforced in school. Uh, and, and I, I and I say that to put it lightly. Perhaps it will be actually um, mitigated. Maybe you know, even you know, maybe you you will have it and forget that you ever did because things are not set up this way, right? You're supposed to go to school, go to college, get a job. Now, if everybody wants to get jobs, then who's creating jobs? But the point is. I don't think I became an entrepreneur. I think I never lost it. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to be the one who creates the jobs as opposed to... <laughs> absolutely. I mean, eventually. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> I have great admiration for anybody who's creating jobs. And, you know, it could be a bakery, you know. You don't have to be rich. But here's the thing. Everybody needs work. Everybody needs work. Not everybody's willing to, you know, go through the roller coaster that being an entrepreneur is. And, you know, quite frankly, a lot of people, you know, they, they just can't deal with it. You know, like sometimes even, you know, especially for somebody who's like, it's got a lot going on in terms of, you know, their emotional side, the family obligations and stuff. You know, there are people that are more free to do it. There are people that are less, but everybody needs work. And personally, the way I think about it is, if I can create jobs, but I choose to settle with a job that is comfort comfortable for me, it's a little bit selfish. You know, even if I employ three people, it's three jobs that are there that there wasn't there weren't there before, and it's one last job that I'm not that I'm take that I'm not I'm choosing to not take that somebody can fill in. So it's four, right? Five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so I think there's, um, personally, I, I think there's a moral, moral, uh, duty. I say, I feel a sense of obligation to at least try to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have the impression that once I get going, it, it will be okay. It'll be good. Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with also having a job that's going to help Absolutely. you get there. Absolutely. So I'm super yeah. grateful for my job. I have no idea. Like <laughs> if it wasn't for this job, oh my gosh, because we were talking about the entrepreneurship right before and how it was a total disaster to building those units. And there's a lot more you to learn. it. There's a lot more to it. Like, I, honestly, this podcast will have to be like five hour long, <laughs> um, but it was so it was so hard. And ultimately, I financially failed after 10 years of grueling workload um tons of lessons learned but this job i'm sorry for my french but this job saved my butt totally did you, you know, can I, say butt here it's okay great save my ass <laughs> so i came here i had 200 dollars. that's all i had literally my supervisor uh let me borrow the money to pay the first mm -hmm. rent because I could not afford a thing. I was riding the bicycle for five months in Oklahoma summer. And I, you know, just, I was just, just had nothing. And I was 28 years old at that point. So it was the, it was absolutely disproportional. The skill I had in the, the financial side it was, it was ridiculous. And if it wasn't for this job, you know, I mean, granted, I could, I actually had opportunity to work at a, different jobs. Um, but my point is a job saved me from absolute failure because I had nothing left to continue. You know, as I made errors and investing money in this prototype and that patent 
and then 100 units that turned no profit whatsoever, I kept recycling that money, you know? I never spent that money personally, but I kept recycling it and putting on the next thing and then the next thing, and ultimately I had a project that was basically stolen. And Oh no. It was awful. What, oh my gosh. What happened? It, uh, I prefer not even talk about it. You know, this is okay. to me it's water okay. under the bridge. But at okay. the end of twenty fourteen it was rock bottom. I had put like oh, two no. and a half, nearly three years of R and D into this mm -hmm. uh super complex unit that's automotive audio, by the way. And mm -hmm. uh it was it was it was awful. At that point I was not paying rent for a commercial uh room anymore. I was working out of my bedroom, no air conditioning. And like not typical, you know, American house size uh, bedroom, like a teeny tiny apartment, horrible. I had two workbenches, my bed in the middle, zero quality of life. And I endured it. And oh, then wow. that, that's what happened. It was, it was crazy. So, you know, if it wasn't for a job to give me uh, stability, I was basically in survival mode at that point. Mm -hmm. And it took a good two years for me to, you know, uh, get my stuff together. And that's basically what the book is about. Um, which two years later, and that's not very long at all, starting from scratch. And my job didn't pay me very much. Uh, in the beginning it was like the type of salary that anyone can make. Um, mm -hmm. I had great credit. I had a car paid for, you know, I was paying rent granted living in a, in a one bedroom, but, um, things were fine. I had savings. You know, I was fine, fine. It was amazing. So I'm overflowing with gratitude for my job. And basically when I get my payment, um, I spend, I don't spend much at all. You know, I don't, I don't go buying video games and clothes and stuff. Um, I have a nice car. I had to do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you got to have one nice you know, thing, right? <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, but basically, <laughs> I, I put the money that, you know, that um, disposable income, if you will, into this project, you know, I'm buying in bulk parts for the spot mobile, like potentiometers, mm -hmm. chips, especially the chips because of the COVID disruption It's so hard oh, to yeah. get them, you know, like, it, sometimes they're six months, one year out. And, you know, if you don't have the chip, you don't have the, the, the whole thing, basically. So I'm already doing that. And figuring out a factory. And it's funny that a job will probably bootstrap my new entrepreneurship career. Mm -hmm. And to your point, we totally need jobs. And my, that includes me, you know? And so, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, at this time, at this point, I recouped my strength. Uh, last year, um, I, well, this year, oh my gosh, things just go so fast. Um, <laughs> but... You know, up until up until August, One Voice VO conference in Dallas, which I drove there, was easy, four hour drive. Um, I had basically no confidence in selling anything and not even any confidence whatsoever in the pod mobile idea at all. You know, I'm like, yeah, I can try this. And, you know, and then I spoke with J. Michael Collins and he said, hey, why don't you come, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, it's it's not expensive. I can just drive. And then I took a few prototypes because why not? And then people just bought it right off of my hands with nothing. No box, no cables, no manual. You know, that beta version, which, you know, I'm asking them, hey, if you need to exchange your unit, I'll, I'm glad, happy to replace it for you. Um, and it was nuts because six years after you're employed, you kind of... You lose a lot of faith in, in, in your ability to, you know, uh, provide for yourself. And especially if you have, you know, dependents, you know, I don't, you know, I, I don't, I'm not married. I don't have kids yet that I would like that very much. Um, but at this point, I just need to provide for myself. I have savings and it's still scary to get out of the job and into, into the, the entrepreneurship. Um, Definitely. So it was yeah, such a I confidence builder, the one voice. And if and I'm still selling units to this day because that one event that I went there as a guest in August, you know, I met you because I met mm -hmm. Andrew because I Andy. met uh, yeah, and you know, I don't even, I don't remember exactly what the connections are, but I'll start with <laughs> J. Michael. 
um, which was, he was so welcoming, you know, and I was so impressed. It was like, I couldn't, it was almost like hard to believe how happy the people were at the conference. And like, <laughs> you guys rock. You guys rock. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you how you enjoyed One Voice. So, like, what did you it end was up absolutely doing there? Awesome. I mean, yeah, it was great. It was great. You know, the the vibe was amazing. Uh, you could talk to everybody, and there was like a very healthy cooperation uh, vibe. Uh, I tended to Tom De Deary. I don't know if that's how I should pronounce it. Tom his Deere. Name. Yeah. Tom Deere. Um, yeah. One of his uh, classes, he was talking about how you know the the VO world is not like me versus you. It's me helping you, and and the mindset was beautiful, um, and I don't know. I'm just so impressed. I'm still impressed, and it's a pleasure to meet the next person and the next person, you know. And, and each each time I sell one of these uh, units to them, I'm just overflowing with, with joy. Not not only because yes, this is showing a light to a career that I always wanted to have, but also I'm selling to people that are great, like Andrew. I sold the for that one to to him and it didn't work with his microphone and he was such a gentleman about it and um you know lo and behold I get the microphone I fix the issue I ship him another unit and now it works perfectly and now yours also works perfectly because I sold it to him yes. first but what I'm, I'm talking about is that you know the it, had I sold it to the wrong personality you know, it could be somebody trashing it from the get go. And that would be it could be like a no recover situation uh, for me. So I'm just grateful to be meeting people like you, like Andrew, like J. Michael, like everybody that has come my way so far. It's been amazing. I'm very, very grateful. I, I, I'm thankful and I pray and I say thank you because it's I do not take <laughs> it for granted. For real. Well, I am so glad to have met you, Fernando, because I love your unit. And I like I that I think is it's just genius. I think it's a beautiful piece of work. <laughs> Thank you so and much. I really I, appreciate that. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. <laughs>